What is up, sports bettors? Welcome to the week 16 edition of the Guys and Bets podcast. Of course, Andrew Avery here with Joe Osborne. Hello! What's up, everybody? Yeah, and uh, week 16, it's hard to believe we're, we're already approaching the finish line here of the regular season. I have still not fully accepted the 49ers loss to the Atlanta Falcons last week, but we move forward. I called it. Straight up, though? No, I took the uh, Falcons plus 17. Yeah, you had them on the teaser. But still. Yeah, it was uh, was a bizarre game. Mm. And uh, no more Thursday night football this week. Uh, But that means we get a triple header on Saturday. That's an interesting... An interesting stat for NFL. Saturday games? Saturday regular season games. Over the last 10 years, on uh, NFL regular season games played on a Saturday, both the road team and underdogs have covered at 60%. Since 1984, the road team in Saturday games has covered at 59.1%. Wow. I love Saturday games. They yeah, sneak up on you, don't they? They really, really do. And I don't know what I'm going to do because I have a full Saturday of bowl games to watch as well. With bowl season kicking off on Friday, the 20th here. Uh, and of course, we are recording this on a Wednesday early afternoon. Mm. Uh, so if you're new to the podcast, Joe and I run through every game on the NFL board. We talk about uh, the lines. We talk about player news, uh, stats, uh, trends, if any are applicable or anything looks good. And uh, just sort of everything to get you started uh, for your handicapping so you don't have to do the work. That's what we do. We are here for you. Yes. So three Saturday games, a bunch on Sunday, and then, of course, a uh, Monday nighter, which could be a doozy yeah. depending on certain things. But uh, overs had the edge in week 15 going 10, 5, and 1, I believe. Uh, what was the Monday nighter Saints game? Yeah, 10-5-1. Yeah, Should have went sure. over. Of course, I picked that on the show. And the Saints, they contributed to the over in that well, one, didn't they? How many points did they put up? 34-7, yeah, I think 30, it was. Oh, my God. Come on, Colts. Yeah, they couldn't like, get anything going. Brissett looked bad. Well, part of the analysis was, hey, the Colts are going to be playing catch-up, and the Saints' secondary is beat up, yeah. so they're going to be able to throw on them. Yeah. No, they would run the clock all the way down to zero yeah. in the fourth quarter and throw the ball two yards. Yeah, I was very angry. It was a very frustrating game for anybody on the Colts or uh, on the over. Mm. Uh, I had Michael Thomas anytime touchdown on the Monday episode of Guys and Bets. Very chalky, but it just felt right considering everything that Drew Brees was playing for. And boy, oh boy, did he look good. But we'll get to the Saints here momentarily. Um, Yeah. Saturday. It starts with, it's three pretty good games, to be honest. Oh my God, yeah. It's and a good it's, day not to have a family. I have a family. Uh, so I don't know how much of these I'll be able to watch. Yeah, you'll have uh, other duties. But, mm. uh, yeah, it starts with the Texans at the Bucks, mm. And right now we got the Bucks plus three and the total at 50. The Bucks open as one-point home dogs. Jameis Winston limited in Tuesday practice. And obviously looking like no Mike Evans for Tampa here, but now Chris Godwin's status doesn't look good either. Rashard Perriman. Yeah, is he on there? Yeah, what did he score? Three touchdowns for them last week? Did he? Yeah. Holy cow, yeah, I missed that big, in the uh, box Step score. up if you're playing DFS. He's your guy. Uh, Carlos Hyde, Will Fuller, Darren Fells, all questionable from that Houston offense. Uh, Texans have now won three of four. And put up a nice win at Tennessee, it's got to be mm-hmm. said. I was on the Titans, of course. Yeah. And, of sure. course, the Bucks have won four straight and are 3-0-1 ATS in those games. Back on the over train as well with the over hitting in back-to-backs. I believe they're the best over wager in the entire National Football League. Joe, what do you got for this one? You know, we talk about zigzag teams almost every week here on the podcast, and mm. the Texans are the ultimate zigzag team in the NFL, 7-7 seven seven ATS this season. But check this out. They are 1-7 and seven against the spread in their last eight games after an ATS win. Mm. So a lot of trouble stringing together back-to-back strong performances. Yeah. Uh, take a look at the total. Uh, the over has hit in 11 of the Bucks' last 12 games. Average combined score of 61. Some might be scared off due to the uh, injuries to the receivers, but I think it looks like a good spot to pound the over again. Okay. You know, and you look at the last three games, I think the Bucs are still going to be able to move the ball without those receivers. 
Over the last three games, the Bucs are fifth in yards per play. During the same span, Texans' defense is awful. 29th in yards per play allowed. So I think this game kind of has track meat written all over it. I'll go over again in a Bucks game. Come yeah, on. Yeah, it's the it's been the right move all season long, and we've got uh, two talented quarterbacks. Uh, James Winston just putting up numbers, but you'll want to check his status here as the week progresses. And then the second game on Saturday is in the AFC East with the uh, Buffalo Bills at the New England Patriots. We got Pats minus six and a half, same as the opening number, and the total at 37 and a half. That's down a point from the opening 38 and a half. Jason McCourty, who's missed about a month here, remains questionable. Julie Ed- Julian Edelman, questionable here as well. Uh, Bills enter this one four and one straight up and against the spread in their last five football games, and the under has hit in four straight. Pat snapped a two-game losing streak with a 21-point win at Cincinnati. Bit slow out of the gate, though. And, of course, beat the Bills 16-10 to earlier this season, but failed mm. to cover a seven-point chalk. Yeah, well, this one all depends on how much illegal footage the Patriots <laughs> have of the Bills sidelined. Yeah. I made that joke on a radio interview before coming on today, and uh, it fell very flat. Did it? Oh my god! It was like three seconds of silence, and that's Love it. forever. Yeah, just silence, and then the guy kind of laughed. Maybe, uh, maybe it's not funny at all, but maybe he didn't get it. So yeah, uh, either way, that's the last time I'll make that joke, unless the Patriots, unless there's a, a third Spygate incident. But man, they have just absolutely owned the Bills when they come to New England. They've won 16 of the last 18. That's straight up not against the spread. And this is kind of where the Patriots hit their stride year after year. Nine and one, straight up eight and two ATS in their last 10 games at home in December. That said, this year is kind of different, isn't it, with the mm-hmm. Patriots, especially on offense? You yes. look at the Bills, 7 0 and 1 ATS in their last eight games on the road. Remember last time they were an underdog this big on Thanksgiving in Dallas? Yeah. They went in there and kicked their ass yeah. in a big game that was in the spotlight. They won on Sunday night, big game that was in the spotlight in Pittsburgh yeah. as an underdog. I think the number's too big. I would lean Bills. I do think the Patriots will win this outright. It's going to be a low-scoring game, as the total would indicate. Total's gone under eight of the Bills' last nine games on the road. Average combined score of 36.6 in those ones. And the total's gone under four of the Bills' last five games in New England. So, yeah, I would lean Bills, and I like under as well. Yeah, I like the side on that one as well. I think Buffalo, for some reason, even though they're, what, 10-4 and four entering this game, mm-hmm. playing really good football. Uh, and uh, like you said, that Thanksgiving game really brought it to the attention on a national scene here. But, yeah, sort of feels like too many points. Don't know about the total yet. Uh, but, yeah, dog looking like a live one here. Game three, uh, NFC West, Rams at Niners. We've got uh, Niners minus six and a half. Again, same as the opening number. And uh, the total down a full point, 45 and a half. Rams off an abysmal performance at the Cowboys last week. Niners off a curious game against the Falcons where they lost as 10-point home chalk. Niners won this one earlier uh, in the season, 20 to seven as three-point road dogs, you will remember. Um I am biased, of course, <laughs> but considering what we saw out of the Rams last week and considering you would have to figure Quinn just had everything that Shanahan threw at him figured out, I like the Niners to bounce back here. Yeah, I like the Niners too, and I think that Goff injury, what a red flag that is. I mean, that's what they were blaming that loss on in Dallas, and that was my worst bet of the year when I picked the Rams to cover the spread mm. in Dallas last week. And maybe the worst performance in a must-win game by a team all season long. Everyone's going to blame Goff. What about Sean McVay? Yeah. You know, that did you not have your team prepared? You knew Goff had the injury going into the game. Maybe prepare a different type of game plan. I don't know. Who knows what's going on behind the scenes? But that was just pathetic. The Rams, you know, they were starting to hit their stride a little bit. Uh, they're not going to make the playoffs now. Uh, not a whole lot of interest in terms of uh, trends for this one. Uh, the total has gone over in four of the 49ers' last five games at home. Average score pretty high, 54.6 in those ones. And we've seen the 49ers' defense, I wouldn't say fall off, but mm. they've been beat up a little bit, right? Yes. So they're allowing more points than they had been uh, in, in the, the first half of the season. 
at least. So I, I think I might uh, be interested in an over bet here. But mm-hmm. overall, you know, I don't know what's up with Goff, but they might just be able to pick on him all game. He looked really bad in Dallas, yeah. and it's on a short week, only one day before. It's not like a TNF game. That would be more of a red flag. But, yeah, 49ers to bounce back. They can't be messing around after no. that loss to the, the Falcons. And, of course, they end the season at Seattle, which has the potential to be one of the biggest regular season games uh, of the year. Ooh, that would be flexed into a Sunday evening. I hope so. Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, so they'd have some redemption on their plate there against uh, primetime Pete yep. and Russell Wilson. That's yeah. great. The season ends today. The Seahawks have the number one overall seed. Yeah. And the West, they don't really seem like the best team yeah. in the conference. They're better than the Packers. Argument to be had about the 49ers. Yeah. So, uh, argument to be had about the Saints. I mean, if Lamar Jackson isn't playing in the NFL, Russell Wilson is probably your MVP this year. He's played that well. Yeah. Uh, they've gotten some big games from the running game. Mm-hmm. Uh, DK Metcalf has stepped up. Those receivers are good. Yeah. But just... I mean, we'll talk about Seattle here uh, momentarily. But, uh, yeah, I'll nip that in the bud, put a pin in that until we get to the Seahawks game. Uh, Go to Sunday here, uh, and we'll start uh, with the New Orleans Saints at the Tennessee Titans. Titans open plus one and a half. It's now plus three. The total open 51. It's now 50 and a half. Saints O-line still a bit beat up. Defense has some question marks as well. Stunning performance from Drew Brees on Monday Night Football in that 34-7 to win mm. against the Colts. Uh, and, of course, Tennessee's four games straight up and ATS winning streak came to a halt against Houston in a game, uh, like we just said, Joe and I both had the Titans. What do you like for this one? Um, Man, like every week it seems like I have ammo to pick against the Saints for some reason, but they just keep on rolling. They have identical two and 10 straight up in nine and three records, both in their last 12 games and in their last 12 games as a road favorite. So they've been pretty good in this spot. You take a look at the Titans over the past couple seasons, just five and 20 straight up in their last 25 games as a home dog. Hmm. So that doesn't really bode very well for them in a must win game here. They're making that push for the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, I think I like the over, you know, hit in seven of the 10 last eight games, average combined score of 53 and a half. When I talked about early in the podcast, how the Colts were unable to take advantage of that Saints uh, secondary that was beat up. And going into that game, I talked about how the Saints defense hasn't been very good uh, over the past couple games. They allowed over 50 points to the 49ers. They let the Falcons go up and down the field on them uh, with ease there. So I I think we're going to see a lot of points in this one. The Titans secondary is beat up as well. We know Ryan Tannehill out of nowhere can all of a sudden chuck it. So, uh, yeah, I think I'd like the the over would be the best bet for this one. Yeah, from the looks of things here, uh, I mean, Brissett did not throw the ball well at all. Uh, you know, Tannehill's been great since he went there and took over. So if there is a quarterback and, you know, a group of receivers and a running game that can pick on this defense that is banged up on every level, the D-line, mm-hmm. the linebackers, and the secondary, if there is a team that can, you know, move the chains, especially at home, It could be the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Let's go to the Jags at the Falcons here. Opened Atlanta minus six and a half. That's now uh, minus seven and a half. And the total is up a half point to 46 and a half. Uh, DJ Chark in a walking boot. So his status does not look good. Vic Beasley questionable for the Falcons. Jags losing streak ended as they closed the Oakland Coliseum with a four point Uh win against the uh, lowly Raiders. And uh, we have the Falcons. Well, back-to-back straight up and ATS wins again and back-to-back overs for that matter. You a big Vic Beasley fan? He was making some plays against the Niners. Oh, yeah. Big Vic <laughs> Beasley guy right here if you're watching on uh, the YouTube. I love him. I got his jersey hanging up in my closet at home. So the Falcons, completely different team out of their bye. They're 4-2 straight up and ATS. Yeah. Two of those wins coming against the Saints and 49ers. Two teams competing for the uh, uh, first round by there in the NFC. And I like the Falcons quite a bit here. The Jaguars are last in third down conversion percentage over their last three games. Falcons first and third down defense in the span. So their defense is really stepping up. Mm. Another interesting uh, little nugget here. The Jaguars are the most penalized team over their last three games and the second most penalized team in road games. So it's those little uh, nuggets like that. There might be might allow the Falcons to extend some drives. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so I do like Atlanta. And here's a trend that means absolutely nothing, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, Atlanta is 0-14 against the spread in their last 14 games versus teams from the AFC. Yeah. So that means nothing from a handicapping perspective, but just an interesting trend, perhaps. Yeah, interesting little uh, footnote there. And uh, one that I believe our very own Ian McMillan tweeted out. Um, I didn't get that from him, by the way, Ian, <laughs> if you're listening. I received it from the data science department, just like you did. Ravens at the Browns in the uh, AFC North. We've got the Browns at plus 10 and a half in the total. Uh, down a point to 48 from the opening 49. New week, new winning streak for the Ravens. 10 wins in a row now. 7-2-1 and one ATS in those 10. Cleveland coming off a real bad loss at the Cardinals. And the over has cashed in back-to-back games for the Browns. I picked the Cardinals on the Football Friday show in that one. Um, just did not look good. A lot of players looking sort of disinterested on that Browns team. Uh, what do you got for this? Oof, what a disgrace mm. the Cleveland Browns are. All the not hope good. they had going into this season. And is there any team in the league that wants the season to be done and over with quicker than the Cleveland Browns? I don't think so. Now they're announcing that they're committed to Freddie Kitchens mm. for another season. Yeah. I hope that there's not much truth to that because, yeah. you know, there is some talent there. And I think given the right head coach, Matt uh, Patricia, oh <laughs> boy, he's going to be back too. I yeah. look forward to betting against the lions next season. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some people don't like these big spreads. I'm not too concerned about in this game. You take a look at the Ravens, 10 straight wins, average win margin of 18 points. Nasty. So they, can they be average? Versus the Browns, if they're average, they're going to cover that big number. Browns, 213-1 ATS in their last 16 games at home versus teams with winning records. Also, a really bad bet as a double-digit dog, 2-7 and seven ATS in their last nine. And your favorite betting spot, it's a revenge game. Exactly. Oh, man. Inexplicably, Cleveland beat them earlier this yeah. season. Yeah. So Big revenge game. Yeah. Big revenge spot if you believe in such things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like Lamar Jackson to sort of, I mean, he's done it week in, week out, just do his own thing. Do they have the top seed clinched? I do not know. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't know. So (laughs) I'm sure some other podcasts might have that information. They might have that info. Uh, Panthers at the Colts. Oh boy. Yeah. What a burn burn. This is not a good one. Uh, this open Colts minus six and a half. And it's uh, seven now, and the total is 46. The Billy Greer era begins, though, for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Greg Olson also uh, cleared concussion protocol. He should suit up here. But the Panthers have lost six straight games, one four and one ATS in yep. those six. Over is hot, though. Cashing in four straight Carolina games. Indies lost four straight. They are one, two, and one ATS in those games. Something's got to give here. Two teams playing some bad stretches of football. It'll be interesting to see uh, Will Greer under center for the Panthers. I was a big fan of his uh, in college. Mm. But other than that, not a whole lot to like in this one. Yeah, I think that number's too big. I don't think the Colts should be favored by totally seven, seven points over Carolina, even though they're on this epic slide right now. But uh, the trends kind of point towards the over the Total has gone over in four. The Panthers last five games on the road. Average combined score of 58.4. Total's gone over in six of the Colts' last eight at home. Average combined score of 45. And, you know, we saw the Panthers show a little bit of fight against the Seahawks there last week. They were out of it for most of it, but made a bit of a push in the second half. So I would uh, side with the Panthers. Probably pretty good on a teaser, getting them all the way up to 13. Mm Mm-hmm. We saw the way the Colts moved the ball against the Saints when yeah. they were down by 25 points or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not very interested in this game from any perspective, really. Yeah, yeah, tough one there. Um, and another tough one here, Bengals at Dolphins. Uh, oh, we got baby. Dolphins minus one after opening minus three and the total at 47 after opening 45 and a half. Bengals followed up. Their win against the Jets with uh, back-to-back losses, both uh, straight up and ATS. And here we have the Dolphins getting beat bad by the Giants their last time out. Yeah, you guys know I'm a Dolphins fan. I talk about this often. And, uh, you know, it was nice to see that uh, that big win that they had against the Eagles a couple weeks back at home. But you don't want to start messing with the draft too much here. Yeah. 
But this is a situation. This is a game that they should win, and they should cover the spread. I don't really understand that they're a one-point favorite at home. That's unusual. That doesn't seem right. I saw it open at three. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think Miami takes care of business here. You take a look at the Bengals on the road. 12 straight losses, average losing margin of almost 10 points. Dolphins really good. Bad, as we know, this season. 73 yeah. ATS in their last 10. Also, 7-1 straight up in their last eight games as a home favorite. You probably have to go back a couple decades over that span of eight games. The Dolphins as yeah. a home favorite, right? Yeah. Uh, Bengals also a great under bet on the road. Uh, seven of their last eight games on the road. Average combined score of just 35 points. Oof. So yeah, I would go with the bank or the Dolphins. I think they're they're building something pretty good there, and it's not a team that's just rolling over to tank. No, you know, and you talk about tanking, uh, that might be like a front office type of thing. But do you think the players on the team uh, care about some young guy that's going to come in and take no, one of their jobs? I Absolutely do not. not. Yeah. So yeah, the players are still trying. I think the Bengals might be one of those teams that's uh, looking forward to getting the season done and over with. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, give me the Dolphins to cover that number. Yeah, I agree with that one there. Uh, Dolphins uh, showing a little bit of fight last week's game notwithstanding, but some good performances overall, and you're right, they are building a little bit of something there in South Florida. Uh, Steelers at Jets, another blah game. Uh, we got Jets plus three, and the total down half point from the opening 38.5 to 38. Still questions on defense for the Jets, who were picked apart last week. Uh, mm. Quinn Williams, Jamal Adams, Arthur Millette, all questionable as of uh, earlier today, Wednesday. Juju and Vance McDonald, questionable for Pittsburgh as well. Unders, of course, the story with the Steelers, now six in a row, eight of nine. Jets, meanwhile, have failed to cover the spread in uh, three straight football games here. Yeah, the Jets are a total disgrace. Uh, I don't know about the side on this one. I've seen a lot of people picking the Jets so far. They think it's a sneaky little spot for them as a, a home dog. But I think I'll stay away from a side. I love the under in this one quite a bit. So check this out. The Jets rank last in yards per play this season. Mm. That matches up perfectly with the Steelers' defense. That's third in yards per play allowed. So that indicates the Jets will have trouble moving the ball. Take a look at the Steelers' offense. 29th in yards per play. The Jets, a surprising seventh in yards per play allowed. Now, they huh. do have some injuries on the defense, but yes. this Steelers offense, guys, is one of the worst in the league. That's not an exaggeration. They were last in red zone TD scoring percentage over their last three games. Jets pretty good at red zone defense, fourth in opponent red zone TD scoring during the span. And, you know, look at the trend. The total has gone under in the Steelers' last six road games. Average combined score of just 35. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. Too early to tell, but... 38 points, I think, is too much. Steelers, a lot to play for still as well, sitting there at 8-6 and six and in the thick of it for the wild card. Great job by Mike Tomlin. Uh, and like you said, that defense, pretty good. Yeah, opening uh, th that Saturday, they usually have like one really shitty game. Yeah. C could you see the Texans hosting the Steelers in that game? Oh, man. I'd be like... I'd uh, love to bet <laughs> the Texans in that one. Yeah, probably. Uh, NFC East... Giants at Redskins. Oh, man. That's a banger. <laughs> Redskins opened as three-point home faves here. It's uh, now two and a half, uh, and the total is up a couple points from 40 to 42. Giants are going through the week as if Daniel Jones is going to be ready to play in this one. So uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for news on that front. Of course, the Giants snapped a nine-game losing streak <laughs> with that aforementioned win against the Dolphins. Redskins had covered in three in a row and would have had a fourth if not for Dwayne Haskins at the end of the game against the Ooh. Eagles. Bad beat there. What do you like for this one? Uh, maybe the Giants. Mm. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, Giants, such a good bet on the road, though, eh? 11 and 3 against the spread in the last 14 road games. Really? That's shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the Redskins, they're just god awful within uh, the division. 0-1-8 straight up, 1-7 ATS in the last eight games versus divisional opponents. So you see some teams play much better within the division. Some teams play much worse. I like paying attention to those trends, and I think the Giants probably get the job done here. I mm -hmm. mean, this is, a, a, what is it, a, when people say a, choose them between shit versus puke? Mm -hmm. Here we go. One of That's those. a version of that this week, yeah. 
<laughs> There's a lot of them on the board. We just went through one, <laughs> two, three. Hey, man, that's the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> They're playing with pride these days. Settle down. Lions at Broncos. Oh, another one. Okay. <laughs> My God. Broncos open at six and a half point home faves. It's up to seven. And uh, yeah, and uh, total open 37 and a half. That has moved to 38 and a half. Lines have been bad for a while, of course, but really bad after what was a promising looking Thanksgiving Day game mm-hmm. against the Bears. Broncos followed up a stellar performance from Drew Locke against the Texans with a 20 point loss at the Kansas City Chiefs. Tell me you got something good for this one. Uh, no, I, I don't. Uh, let's move on. No, uh, you know, I, I think that was a really bad spot for, for Drew Locke and the uh, the Denver Broncos in the snow. This is a team that should be pretty good in the snow, you would think. But you have Locke making, what, his third career start yeah. against a team that's uh, the best in the division in the snow. So it wasn't a good situation for him. So maybe give them a little bit of a pass for that one, I guess. But, uh, you know, you take a look at the Lions, one and eight against the spread in their last nine games. Dreadful. Yeah, and I think it could be a a good spot to get back on the Broncos under, which has had been one of the hottest bets uh, going back to last season. It's hidden 17 of their last 23 games. And I I think this is going to be a low scoring game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Patricia. Being disrespectful, wearing his hat backwards. <laughs> you don't like that. No, man. It's disrespectful to the sport. <laughs> How dare they? They're bringing... It's so funny with Matt Patricia that Matt, uh, Stafford getting injured yeah. actually saved his job, probably. Yeah, probably. Because that's the excuse. Okay, another shitty season for Patricia. Well, the quarterback got injured. Okay, let's give him another chance. Let's give him a yeah, longer leash. So they'll start over in 2021 and set it right away. So who, just delaying. Who would you rather have coaching your team, Matt Patricia or Freddie Kitchens? Oh, boy. I would choose the uh, Ryan brothers to uh, <laughs> ahead of those two bozos. Oh, my God. Let's go to the AFC West here. Raiders, Chargers uh, open. Chargers minus six and a half. It's now minus seven. Total down a point and a half from 47 to 45 and a half. Plenty of questionables for the Raiders here. Josh Jacobs, Hunter yeah. Renfro, Richie Incognito, Trent Brown on that offensive line there. Raiders have lost four straight and five straight against the spread. Yeah. Chargers, though, just one and four straight up and ATS in their last five. Over has hit in three straight Chargers games, though. The Raiders are who we thought they were. Mm. Some of you let them off the hook, I including thought, myself. There were guys in Betts Darling. I was just going to say, I thought they were a GB mm. Darling. Not so. Yeah, a lot of interesting trends and numbers for this one. If you want to, those of you watching on YouTube, uh, take a look there. Uh, just have a the look, one in the middle here. The highlighted section. The highlighted section <laughs> is for this game, and I like the Chargers, and I like the under, and I will read off uh, my bullets to you. The Chargers, fourth in yards per play this season. The Raiders' defense just got awful, 29th in yards per play allowed. Over the last three games, the Chargers are tied for third and third down conversion percentage. Oakland is last in the span, so watch the Chargers move the ball up and down the field with Mm. ease. Uh, Penalties is one that I'd like to look at who's disciplined and who isn't. The Chargers are tied for the third fewest penalties in home games. The Raiders average the sixth most penalties in road games. Now... For the under trends, these are pretty overwhelming. The total has gone under in 11 of the Raiders' last 13 games versus divisional opponents. The total has gone under in 11 of the Chargers' last 15 versus divisional opponents. The total has gone under in 16 of the Chargers' last 22 in December. That one's kind of stupid. The total has gone under in 5 of the Raiders' last 6 versus the Chargers. And finally, the Raiders are 0-8 straight up, 1-7 ATS in their last 8 games versus divisional opponents. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe that's a good spot for a teaser, too. I don't often like teasing totals in the NFL, but maybe yeah. if you are specifically interested in this game for some reason, uh, it could be a good spot. Uh, NFC West, Cardinals, Seahawks. Seahawks minus 9.5. Total is 50, up a point and a half from 48.5. Mm. Questions all over the defensive side of the ball for Seattle. Clowney, Ansa, Kendricks, Wagner, Griffin, Diggs. Really strong game from Arizona at home against Cleveland last time out. They look good. Got to say it. Kyler Murray. Uh, Kenyon Drake. Mm -hmm. What do you have, 20 touchdowns in that game? 
Really uh, yes. strong performance. Funny story. Or it's actually not funny at all. But, okay. Uh, it's a it's a fantasy football. So I'm in my fantasy football league finals. Thanks to Kenny yeah. Drake. This is a league that I barely pay any attention to, <laughs> uh, because I, you know, I'm the, I'm the type of guy that's setting my lineup five minutes before the game, and I'm at the uh, convenience store getting some stuff, and I said, oh yeah, I haven't looked at my fantasy lineup yet. Uh, Tyler Boyd was originally in the lineup to go against uh, Stefan Gilmore and the Patriots. Yeah. And I saw Drake there on my bench. Oh, let's throw Drake in. Yep. There we go. Big money coming my way this Sunday in my fantasy football finals. Yeah, good luck with that. Thanks, yeah, man. Kenyon Drake carrying you to the final. But yep. um, Seahawks bounce back from that loss to the Rams with a six-point win over the Panthers, like we mentioned before, to push the minus six, which is where that game closed. Seahawks are nothing for me in this one, personally. Yeah, you know. Unless you believe in letdown spots or look ahead spots, man, I should say. You cannot. If they're looking ahead at this point of the season, that's an absolute travesty because if they win out, they get that number one overall seed, yeah, right? Yeah, primetime so, Pete won't let that happen. Yeah, Trust so me. no messing around here for the no. Seahawks, guys. And we talk, I've been talking about penalties quite a bit throughout uh, the podcast year. And we have another good match here. The Seahawks are the least penalized team on their home field this season. The Cardinals have the most penalties in road games this season. Huh, Seahawks, yeah, also also a great bet at home this time of year. They're 21-9 and nine against the spread in their last 30 games at home in December. That number, though, you know, the Seahawks have won quite a few close games, haven't they? They have trouble pulling away. We saw it in the Panthers game, too. Yeah. I had the minus six. That game ended up pushing. Yeah. Uh, and they were up big throughout points of that game. And, you know, you could see you see the Cardinals are slinging it pretty good from time to time. From they time have, to time. They have that ability. Yeah. But, yeah, I would have to agree. Seahawks at home. Uh, check on the weather, of course. Yes. Do you trust Kyler Murray playing out in the cold this time of year? Not yet. Not really. So, yeah, it, it is a lot of points, but I would definitely lean Seahawks. NFC East. Big matchup at the top of the standings there. Cowboys at Eagles. Eagles open plus one, now plus three. To- total open 47 and a half. That's down a full point to 46 and a half. Dak Prescott, questionable mm-hmm. with an injury to his right index finger. Uh, Jordan Howard, N- uh, Nelson Aguilar, questionable for Philly, of course. Cowboys with one of their best performances of the season yeah. against the Rams last week. And Philly's now won back to back games. Yeah, Philly, they're kind of pasting that offense back together again. Like, all those skill guys went out. But if you look at since halftime of the Giants game, which is two games ago, they scored 57 points. So uh, they're pasting it together with a bunch of guys you'd never heard of. All that said, you know, we were talking about how you have to look at divisional games a little bit different. The Cowboys have owned divisional opponents. Mm. Eight straight wins, eight straight covers in their last eight divisional games. Wow. Cowboys also 6-1 and one straight up in ATS in the last seven on the road mm-hmm. versus the Eagles. And the Eagles not good in this spot. 4-11 ATS in their last 15 as home underdogs. So you really have to pay attention to the injury report. Yeah. I think Dak's going to be back. Do we know when the injury occurred? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, so... I mean, the Cowboys, you don't want to have much recency bias because how many times have they let people down so far this season? Yeah. So, yeah, it's not my favorite bet of the week, but I think I would uh, be on the Cowboys at picking the side here. Sunday night football pits the Kansas City Chiefs at the Chicago Bears. We had an opening line of Bears plus four. It's now plus five and a half. Total still at the opening number of 45. Damian Williams still questionable in the uh, Chiefs' backfield. Chiefs have now won four in a row straight up and ATS, and the under has hit in four games in a row as well. That defense getting the job done. Bears had a three-game winning streak snapped at Lambeau in their last game. Now get to go home against a team that's sort of finding their groove again uh, as we enter the postseason. Tough little game here for the Bears, I think. The Bears! <laughs> You're all over the Bears this week? Uh, no. Oh. The 2-8 and eight ATS in their last 10. Meanwhile, the Chiefs defense finding their footing, right? 17 or fewer points allowed over their last four games. Mm. Uh, you know, Chiefs pretty good on the road. 6-1 and one in their last uh, seven on the road there. The Bears pretty good as a home underdog, though. 11-2-1 in their last 14. Like that stat? As a home dog. But uh, the stat I like best for this is betting the under and Bears home games. It's hit in eight 
of their last 10 average combined score of just 34 points. What did you say the numbers at for this one? For, for the, the total? total? Yeah. Total is 45. 45. So, yeah. So you combine that trend with the fact that the Chiefs' defense is improving. Yeah. 17 or fewer points allowed in the yeah, last really four. Good. Versus some okay offenses, you know, uh, you're not going to give them too much credit for beating up on, uh, the, well, it was the Patriots in New England. They held them to 16 points. Yep. Patriots offense isn't what they have been. But yeah, the Chiefs are a team who I pinpointed, I think, last week or the week before. I think they're peaking right now and they're kind of coming together. Yeah. Everyone's healthy. Yeah. And their defense is stepping up, which is something that's uh, lacked for them the past year and a half. And, uh, yeah, I think under would be my favorite bet in this spot. Do you think we start taking the Chiefs a bit more seriously when it comes to the playoffs and the end result being oh, yeah. the Super Bowl? Yeah, I like them at plus 700. Yeah. Uh, you know, we often see one of those teams wild card weekend sneak through to yeah. get to at least the conference final, and it could be KC. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they – I don't know how the uh, the bracket – looks right now but i think they would end up going to new england if new england gets a second seed mm. they got that monkey off their back by beating them a couple of weeks back yeah so and they do have that win over the ravens too i think earlier in the season don't they did they beat the ravens as well i think so yeah it was a really close game uh if only i wasn't old and had the memory of a goldfish too much marijuana <laughs> i'm a high right now yeah it's legal in some parts of the world, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, they did beat them by five points. Five points. Covered the spread as a four-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, that was at home, and that was before Lamar Jackson. Uh, yeah, what became, was that, week three? Uh, yeah, it was before Lamar became fully unleashed. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're shaping up for a showdown between Lamar and Mahomes in the AFC title oh, game. Oh, I can't wait. Bring, bring it on. Be? Bring yeah. it on. Monday nighter, Packers, Vikings, Ah, Vikings minus four and a half. The total's down a full point from the opening 46 and a half to 45 and a half. Obviously, big injury concerns with the uh, backfield in Minnesota, namely Dalvin Cook and uh, Xavier Rhodes as well. Questionable here. Under has hit in five of six Green Bay Packers football games, and they've won three straight, straight up. Mm. Vikings back-to-back straight up and ATS wins, and the over has hit in five of their last six. Yeah, this Packers team, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, you take a look at some of the underlying stats, especially on the road. They're last in net yards per play on the road. You know, mm. they've had some really bad performances, uh, specifically that one in San Francisco, yep. as I'm sure you recall. Oh, I do. Vikings much better at home, tied for fifth in net yards per play, specifically when playing at home. And I would favor the Vikings in this one. The number's higher than I thought it would be, though. I thought it would have been maybe three. Yeah. You know, you get three points for home field advantage or whatever. So number seems a bit high, but there's the logic is definitely there to back it up. But uh, this game is also screaming under if you're specifically looking at trends. Uh, the under, this is amazing. It's hit in 25 of the Vikings' last 33 divisional games and 16 of their last 18 Divisional home games, totals gone under in the Packers' last seven games versus divisional opponents. And specifically for this matchup, it's hit an eight of the last ten. Average combined score of 40. So I like under. Well, there's your 16 games for week 16. We won't be here next week. Oh, yeah. Christmas time. Christmas time. Holidays. No podcast. Mm. Unless you want to come into the office and do it alone. Uh, I was going to see if you want to come in on Christmas Day. <laughs> do it together. We can exchange gifts, perhaps. Secret oh. Santa, two, two man Secret Santa. So, no secret at all. $10 budget. That's I'll, it. I'll have a PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5. Yeah, they're coming out. I forgot about that. No podcast. Oh, Be well. one of those dicks. Remember when PlayStation 4 came out? Those These guys, you buy them all up and you sell them for like 900 bucks. Is that what up. the people do? Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. I'm thinking of doing it. I'm an Xbox guy. We're a much better community. Mm, <laughs> sleep, very unsophisticated, the uh, Xbox people. Uh, we will have a show, though, if you're familiar with our YouTube show. We go Monday through Friday, noon in the east, 9 a.m. Uh, in the west, Uh so we're off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but back on Friday. So um, you'll be able to get uh, some football capping and uh, nonsense that way. 
But yeah, this is it until playoffs. Last regular season pod. Very sad. Yeah, the season, you know, you get into the routine. Flies by, man. It's kind of like when, when you work in uh, sports media, specifically covering uh, the NFL and college football, too. It's kind of like uh, not Groundhog Day, but Groundhog Week. Mm-hmm. You know, every day it starts over again on Monday where you start looking at the games for the following week. Then it happens. You react to it, and then you move on all over again. You do it 17 straight weeks, and uh, I'm quite looking forward to the playoffs here. Yeah, absolutely. I am as well. And I am also looking forward to bowl season. And that kicks off on Friday mm. with the Bahamas Bowl. And I love Buffalo in that game. Is I that hope, right? uh, yes. Uh-huh. They have a running back, uh, Jarrett Patterson, who is just an absolute the buff- beast. The Buffalo Bisons? Buffalo Bulls. I think they should change their name to the Bisons. Is there a Buffalo Bison somewhere? What do we got? We got the Sabres. We got the Bills. We got the Bulls. Is that. Does Buffalo have a minor league ball team? That Buffalo Bison. <laughs> that might be We're it. Just right gonna there. anoint at that. We should do a podcast specifically on the Buffalo Bi- Bisons if they exist. Uh, I'm gonna say we should just do a podcast dedicated to the sports scene in Buffalo as a mm-hmm. whole. Buffalo Bisons are the AAA affiliate okay. of uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. Okay, that's yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for our Buffalo dedicated podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big feature on the Bisons. Uh, We hope that we gave you guys a good jump-off point to start your handicapping throughout the NFL regular season here. As Joe said, we will not be here uh, next week, but we will be back for uh, the uh, postseason. So uh, we hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas if you're uh, the celebrating Christmas type. And uh, whoever you're going to spend your time with, make sure you give them time and love, but then don't forget to listen to the podcast and watch Guys and Bets as well. You're going to need to do that. Best of luck with your Week 16 bets. We'll catch you in two weeks, a fortnight as they call it, Joe. Goodbye.